for me, the bike was always about adventure. Adventure for me was there from the start. The Beaumont knows. <laughs> My name's Mark Beaumont. I'm from uh, Scotland in the UK and uh, I'm an ultra endurance, normally road rider. Yeah. Gravel's only come about over the last couple of years. So I've cycled around the planet twice. I've done expeditions to 130 countries. Done quite a lot of big expeditions off the bike as well. So ocean rowing, Arctic, high altitude mountaineering. Uh, I've spent the last 20 years trying to push a lot of world records and world firsts. So I currently hold the world record for cycling around the planet. So that's 27,000 kilometers. I still hold the record for the length of Africa, uh, Cairo to Cape Town, and uh, there's been lots of other adventures over the years. Adventure for me was, was there from the start, because I grew up in a small farm in the foothills of the highlands of Scotland, so you're in the wilderness. I, I didn't go to school until secondary school, so my entire education from the start was homeschooling. So I spent a lot more time outside building resilience, building that sort of physical competence than, uh, than in the classroom. So, you know, I was working on a farm. I was physical. I was, uh, you know, every morning I was outside looking after the goats, the horses, the, sh the sheep, the cows, and when you're, when you're physical like that from a very early age, then adventure is a pretty natural thing. You know, when I went to school and I was in a, in a playground at the age of 13, I found that very, very alien, very foreign. I was quite young when I had my first ideas to go on a journey, and, um, I was 12 when I cycled across Scotland, which is not a big country, obviously, but still for a 12-year-old kid. I was 15 when I did my first solo 1,000-mile, 1,000-mile ride. And uh, by the time I left university at the age of 22, I was ready to cycle around the world the first time. Bienvenue parmi nous et surtout au Parc des Braves à Magog pour ce troisième lancement du GBC 250 et 500. Nous avons plus de 200 amateurs de vélo de Garavier qui vont prendre le départ. Good morning, Mark. Hey, how are you? Good yourself. Great. You slept well? Yeah, the sun is shining. Yeah, it's perfect. What drew me to the event was about coming to Quebec and exploring gravel here for the first time. I've never done that. I've not done anything like this, so I'm, I'm excited about the new. Je m'embarque pour une troisième fois sur le 500 km. Première expérience, le 500, objectif non-stop, en bas de 30 heures. C'est ma première expérience cette année au GBC. C'est ma première expérience. Troisième expérience, 250 km, finir à la lumière du jour. Je me dis 22, ça va vraiment bien, mais en bas de 24. Le matin du départ, là, on est fébrile, on a peut-être mal dormi. On sait qu'on a fait tout le travail qu'il fallait faire, mais on ne sait pas qu ce qui peut se passer. Parce qu'il peut toujours avoir des petits pépins dans une aventure grande comme celle-là. Que ce soit des bris mécaniques, on a mangé quelque chose que finalement ça ne fait pas trop dans notre système. On n'a pas bu assez à certains moments importants. Donc il y a plein de questionnements que des fois, même si on l'a déjà fait, on ne sait pas comment on va réagir cette fois-ci dans cette grande aventure. 3, 2, Un, partez et c'est lancé!
I'd sort of built up over the years, uh, building my confidence. But I mean, cycling for me was never really about racing. It was never really about trying to beat anyone else because I never grew up in a competitive environment. It was me and my two sisters on a farm. For me, the bike was always about adventure. Can I grab one of these? Yeah. I've grown up to be passionate about pushing myself and pushing records, but I, I've never really been trying to beat anyone else. And whenever people try and compete with me, that's not something I find very easy. For me, my passion is just being in the wilderness and the psychology and the, the, the physicality of, of going to hard places. I've got a very simple decision-making matrix. Right at the top is safe, the next one is finish, and the bottom one is fun. For anyone taking on the GDC 250 or 500, I've got the utmost respect because it's a huge challenge. I think people to put too much focus on the fast riders. If you're out there to do it non-stop and to, to race, you've got to realize that people like myself, we train professionally to do this. This is, this is our job. You know, when people meet me at events, people always say to me, Mark, I would love to do what you do. And I always say to people, I think you like the idea of what I do. I enjoy what I do because I've done it since I was a kid, but it's hard work. It's hard work. And I think that's the reality that some people miss. When you've built a team, you've got sponsors, uh, you've got media, the first priority is safety. The only reason you would not finish an event is if it's unsafe to do so. I've got a very simple decision-making matrix. Right at the top is safe, the next one is finish, and the bottom one is fun. Now you think, well, that's crazy. You know, fun should be further up. But the reality is if you're doing something that's never been done before, if you're doing something at record-breaking pace, if you're doing something truly difficult, at times it's not gonna be fun. But not having fun is not a reason not to finish. So most people quit because they give up. À 8 heures, j'avais fait 300 km. Là, il me reste à peu près 75. On veut terminer quelque chose qui est grand. Quand on a des moments de défaillance, ce qui me fait continuer, parce que dans ces moments-là, c'est plus le fun. Puis là, on se demande exactement pourquoi qu'on est rendu là, pourquoi j'ai décidé de faire ça, j'ai mal aux pieds, euh, plus capable de m'asseoir sur ma selle, j'ai mal au cou, etc. Je pense que ça dépend de chaque personne. Moi, c'est ma tête de cochon parce que mon objectif, c'est vraiment de terminer. Je vais faire tout ce que je peux pour essayer de, si mon corps est encore capable de le faire, de me rendre à la ligne d'arrivée. Je peux vivre l'expérience, puis je travaille pas. Bon, j'arrête un peu. Il euh, faut que je me, je me conditionne pour pas arrêter trop simple pour prendre des photos. Mais sinon, euh, juste de, ça, de souffrir, puis d'apprécier le processus, puis de, de, de repousser un petit peu ses limites. Là, euh, j'ai quand même fait une, fait une coupe de détour. Euh, j'ai eu des grosses crampes. Ça a été difficile la première journée. À semaine, là, ça allait moins bien euh, mentalement. J'ai pris le temps de manger tranquillement. La salade au riz, là, bien tranquillement, ça rentrait plus la bouffe rendue là. Puis euh, ma femme est venue me voir, puis ça m'a reparti, ça. Je suis reparti euh, faire l'autre bout de 100 km qui me reste encore. The second type of hardship is when nothing catastrophic has gone wrong, but it's just the sheer attrition. It's the sheer being worn down by the longevity of it. So being in the Australian outback for 3,000 miles into a headwind on your own, unsupported. You know, I've done that.
that's not a crisis moment, that's just the sheer attrition of hard riding. And I think that's harder to deal with. So you might think broken bones and crisis moments are the hardest of all, but I think what, I think what gets people is just the never endingness of hardship. And the only thing I can really say in that situation is, when you put yourself into a really difficult situation, there's not normally an easy way out. The times I've been at my lowest, uh, I'm normally somewhere I can't just quit. So if you're in the middle of the outback, or the middle of the Sahara Desert, or you're in the middle of rowing across the Atlantic, or you're high on a mountain in Alaska, when you're at that point where you've just been worn down and you cannot carry on, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You are fully in, you are committed. The only thing worse than sort of going slowly, which is what you're doing at that time, is stopping. M momentum, momentum is your greatest friend. Momentum is all you've got, you know? And so you, you hold on to the fact that, you know, keeping going at whatever pace you can is, is, is all you've got. C'est ça une aventure. I've got so much respect for somebody from a standing start, from, from an amateur background, who's doing this as the biggest thing they've ever done. That is, that is more impressive. take people who go out there and do it over two, three, four days, and this is the biggest thing they've ever done, they've got no reference point for it, and they're training around a full-time job and a family. They're spending maybe two, three, four times longer in the saddle than, than I will. I've got so much respect for somebody from a, from a standing start, from, from an amateur background, who's doing this as the biggest thing they've ever done or the biggest challenge of their year. That is, I would say, more impressive than somebody who's, you know, top amateur or semi-professional or professional who smashes it out of the park. You know, I, I say the same for marathon runners. You know, it's amazing if you can run sub three. That's awesome. But the guys that do it in, or the girls that do it in six hours, seven hours, my God, I mean, imagine running for six or seven hours. That is, that is more impressive. You know, we need to level the playing field and realize that it's a huge challenge for everyone taking this on. If you're finishing it fast, it's probably because you've got a lifetime of experience to allow you to do that. It is legitimately just as hard to do it, you know, at whatever pace is difficult for you. And that's the wonderful thing about adventure racing as opposed to, you know, road racing. Because, you know, this for many people is a multi-day adventure experience. Chaque année, c'est différent. Chaque année, le parcours est différent. Les côtes sont différentes. Le dénivelé est incroyable. Donc, de relever ce défi-là, c'est toujours euh, euh, impressionnant, mais euh, mémorable aussi. Les cuisses euh, commencent à être un petit peu molles. Quand c'est pas le dos aussi qui décide de faire euh, du sien aussi. T'es pas capable d'enlever <rire> la maille patente. Elle était jamais. <rire> fait que là, on a eu besoin d'un monsieur. <rire> on remercie Luc. Merci. Je pense juste à quand je vais arriver, à quel point je vais être contente d'avoir réussi. Ça peut, ça peut pas être facile. Tu fais quelque chose de nouveau puis qui est extrêmement difficile. Puis tu sais, tu vas, tu vas au-delà de tes limites là. Fait que c'est sûr que oui là, tu sais, j'ai bougonné, mais là je marchais puis là, je, je, 
vais, je, vais, je vais le faire pareil, je, je, vais, je vais arriver, puis j'espère juste de ne pas avoir un coup dur. Tu sais, J'avais une petite crainte peut-être d'avoir une autre crevaison ou quoi que ce soit. Mais... Dans un moment de défaillance, notre corps, tous nos petits bobos qu'on on commence à sentir deviennent immenses. Pour moi, ce qui m'aide quand je suis vraiment, euh, quand je fais des événements qui sont longs comme ça, je mets jamais mon kilométrage, je l'ai jamais sous les yeux. Donc, je vais mettre ma map, puis mon kilométrage est comme sur une autre page. Fait que si je veux le voir, il faut que je tasse ma map, mais j'essaie de ne pas regarder ça. Donc, je travaille, c'est quand mon prochain point où je dois m'arrêter. J'ai un checkpoint qu'il faut que j'aille prendre de l'eau. Donc, j'y vais étape par étape. Je le prends comme une tarte, une petite pointe à la fois. I love working with Argan 18 as a brand because they're small enough to care. It's, it still feels like a family business, even though it's a global brand. They're only building really high quality bikes where you know, I get to work on bikes for the future. I'm working on bikes for 24, 25, 26. That's so exciting. So then when it relates to not just building bikes, but the community. You know, events like the GBC 500 and other things happening in Quebec and globally across to Europe. I think the opportunity I've got as somebody who works with, uh, with Argon 18 is to get these stories out. But not just from the perspective of sort of the athlete's story, but also I think people are intrigued in, you know, Canadian gravel, you know, what's here, that sense of wilderness, this, this, this incredible country. My audience is a lot more in the UK and Europe than it is over here, so it's great to be able to come over and, and to, to do something that intrigues me, but hopefully, you know, inspires other people to, to, to get out there and, and ride. So don't get freaked out by the length of the road. Don't be freaked out by the fact that you're still going to be riding tomorrow or the next day. You can always ride the road in front of you. And if you have that mindset, the event will take care of itself. My main advice is you can always ride the road in front of you. Look at the horizon you can see. Think about your very simple inputs. If you're having a psychological crash, it's probably because you've got a nutritional crash. Eat something. Look after yourself, be kind to yourself. If you're in a bad place, don't, don't beat yourself up. You know, it'll get better. You'll come out that, that dip. So don't get freaked out by the length of the road. Don't be freaked out by the fact that you're still going to be riding tomorrow or the next day. You can always ride the road in front of you. And if you have that mindset, the event will take care of itself. You miss the beauty of events like the GBC 500 if you're focused on the finish. If your entire focus throughout of it is to get through it, you kind of end up missing the point. Of course it's hard, it's meant to be hard, so you need to have that end goal in the back of your mind, but actually the only thing you can affect is the road in front of you. So stay in the moment. Most people who give up or fail at major events, they don't give up because their bikes break or because they're physically broken. They give up because they stop riding the road in front of them. You can always ride the road in front of you. J'ai vraiment hâte d'avoir fini, mais je suis super fière d'avoir accompli 500 km en moins de 48 heures. Euh, C'est un défi, fait que je suis vraiment, vraiment... Moi, je suis fière de moi. Mentalement, je suis prête à souffrir et rester pour aller jusqu'au bout. On reste positif. <rire> La dernière bonne grosse, après ça, ça va être euh, dans le sac. <rire>
fucking hilly. Yeah. I knew it'd be special. I knew, I knew it'd be unlike anything I've ever ridden before, and it certainly was. Écoute, c'est une brute, ce gars-là. Il, il fly, là. Tout ce qui est plat, faux plat, là, petit vallon, euh, c'est comme si c'était une piste cyclable, là, tu sais. I, I mean, I, I did push it. I did push it. I mean, if there was some other really fast racers, I could have gone a little bit harder, but I wanted to go at a level where, like, I was doing a solid effort, but I was still enjoying it. Like, I'm at the end, I'm tired, sure, but I'm fine. Like, I'm absolutely fine. Just a 22-hour ride. <laughs> fait que moi, je faisais juste aller à mon rythme parce que je n'étais pas capable de le suivre quand c'était trop vite. Puis d'un monté, ben moi, j'ai comme un petit rythme. Fait que je fais mes affaires, puis là, il me rejoignait. nos objectifs, plan A, puis pas se blesser. J'ai eu des hops et des dents dans mon énergie, mais... Euh, je pense que ça va. C'est sa fête aujourd'hui. Ouais. À sa fête. Aujourd'hui, je suis passé pas mal par toute la gamme des émotions. Là. Le dernier bout était vraiment le fun. C'est... Euh, c'était bien le fun, mais c'était top, Colin! What a test, what an amazing test, what an amazing event. If, uh, if you've not ridden gravel in North America, come straight to Canada. Cheers. <laughs>